in Italy, India, and Bali. I was captivated by the woman who left everything behind and went off on a trip that changed her life so distinctly that she was able to write a best-selling book about it so that middle-aged women and I could live vicariously through her words. <laughs> in fact, growing up in a relatively conservative household, I can honestly say she was the most inspirational 35-year-old liberal divorcee I've ever encountered. <laughs> she was practically my role model. Yet perhaps what drove me to appreciate her story so much was the fact that her reason, her so-called purpose to do these things, which someone like me can only imagine reading about, was to escape the hardships and the pressures of the overwhelming world she lived in. Elizabeth Gilbert booked her flights and her hotels, but after that, she let life take its course for the rest of the year while she traveled on this spontaneous journey. Elizabeth Gilbert had no clue where her life would go or even what she would come home to as she spent her entire life savings on the trip. She literally had a blank future. In short, the girl was gutsy. Elizabeth Gilbert offers a contrasting point to this concept called purpose. Purpose, by definition, means the reason which something exists or is done. As a species, we pride ourselves on our capability to reason. So the concept of purpose can become an all-consuming one. What I mean by this is that we all want to know that everything we do has an underlying reason. The possibility that our actions can have an impact creates within us a drive and a life that we define everything by its role in our purpose. For instance, the purpose behind this combo talk is to fulfill my requirement in order to graduate. I am not speaking up here merely to bestow my imparted wisdom upon you, my dear younglings, though I am sure you await my message with eager ears. <laughs> I define my life, even in this moment, by what I can achieve through these actions. Elizabeth Gilbert, for me, is living proof that it is possible to accomplish greatness without a plan or even a driven purpose for each step of your life. She did not need to achieve step A in order to move on to step B. Each moment of her life would unravel by itself, exposing mystery and hinting at fulfillment. She did not check off steps on a to-do list in order to understand where she was going. Nevertheless, I can't understand how this could be a scary concept to grasp, as living life without purpose seems more like a leap of faith. Purpose is so instinctual that it is even embedded into our youth. Remember when you were younger and your parents asked you to do something because they said so and you were feeling you are left feeling incomplete and lacking any motivation to perform whatever they asked? For it is comforting to know, whatever we do and whenever we do it, it is for not enough for nothing and we will eventually achieve something because of it, or at least at the very least, get something worthwhile out of it. We understand purpose as the answer to the age-old question of why we exist. Humans base their entire spirituality on the core fundamentals of purpose in relation to life. Buddhism centers on reaching one's full and potential in the universe in order to reach the spiritual freedom. Buddha, Buddha is even reported to have said, your purpose in life is to find your purpose and give your whole heart and soul to it. Emphasizing the idea that a life without a concrete purpose is perhaps not even a life worth living. The problem with a set purpose and chasing after that fixed perception of the future is that life is not moving at cruise control from one goal to another. Simply neglecting the pieces that are unpredictable and uncontrollable accidents. In fact, the most enlightening moments of my life have been complete accidents in which I played no role. One of the most prominent instances was that when was I was only a sales associate at IZOD, performing my duties and observing the customers. I was struck by a specific conversation between two strangers. One was a child who seemed fascinated by a grown man in his bright turquoise shoes. The young girl said, with as much eloquence as she can muster, Hello, sir. I like your shoes. They bring out the prettiness in your eyes. The man was delighted and continued the conversation with the young child. They talked and they talked about the shoes until the girl's mother had come to tell her it was time to leave. At the final goodbye, the man said, Before you go, I want to tell you something. You are a special girl, and God has made you a special for a reason. As the daughter proceeded to leave the store, explaining to her mortified father how cute the boy with the nice shoes was, her mother stayed. 
She explained to the man how much it meant to her that he called her little girl special, as three months earlier her sister had died of cancer, and how the little girl was all they had left. She was indeed special. There was no given purpose in this encounter, no reason, no set goal of achievement. It just happened. Yet it was so great that there did not need to be a purpose behind it. It just needed to happen. Purpose, in the end, becomes more of a crutch in which we hold our burdens of expectations and hopes for the future. Whether or not we can walk forward in our life without it, supporting us for every step, remains up to us. To strive for excellence and that shining idea of a future can be great. But with an overwhelming reason controlling your life, the chase not only takes away from the happy accidents, but also the key moments that shape life which allow us to reach this greatness. For possibly, just possibly, to find one's purpose is the greatest accident that life can bestow upon you, creating an irony to which we have learned since we are able to reason for ourselves. Perhaps, as Oscar Wilde said, a paradox is only the truth standing on its head to gain attention. Stumbling upon your own purpose seems to be a paradox of which we are so wired to find our own paths, and thus just sitting around waiting seems to be the opposite of what we should do. We should be searching desperately to find our niche in the world. We should prepare ourselves for that golden opportunity. Yet, we hear of the everyday stories of life-changing moments that were not planned and were not even considered. For instance, David Quammen, our latest convocational speaker and highly recognized science writer, admitted to wanting to be a fiction writer. He earned his degree in English and even published a book before discovering nonfiction. Dr. David Quammen would not discover his passion for nonfiction writing until 10 years later through what he thought was a filler job until his next book. If a paradox is really the truth standing on its head, we can understand the idea of purpose is not derived from what we plan, but what we experience outside of our control. In a way, we must let go of what we cannot control. Elizabeth Gilbert explores this topic of simply letting go the chase of purpose in her book, Eat, Pray, Love. Throughout the beginning of the book, she is chasing what she views as, as her purpose of existence, whether it's through religion or trying to move on with life in the city of New York. However, she gradually discovers on her whim of a journey, life, if you keep chasing it so hard, will drive you to death. Time, when pursued like a bandit, will behave like, like one, always remaining one country or one room ahead of you. Change James' name and hair color to elite you, slipping out the back door of a motel just as you're banging through the lobby with your newest search morning warrant, leaving only a burning cigarette in the ashtray to taunt you. At some point, you have to stop because it won't. At some point, you have to admit that you can't catch it, that you're not supposed to catch it. At some point, you've got to let go and sit still and allow contentment to come to you. It is easy to understand, and it's it's easy to understand that life and its experiences are not in our control. However, it is more difficult to accept that we may not control who we will become. Today, we cling to the idea of, per of our purpose. We fight for it, for it, and we take every precaution and opportunity to secure our assumed future. Yet, as much preparation, as much effort we put into our supposed purpose, life influences us takes us in a new direction, and changes who we are at the end of tomorrow. Whoever we end up being, whatever our purpose is, it can be revealed through only time.